Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined today by Luann Riley, who just preached part four of our Resolve for More series on uh, encouraging us to look after each other's hearts. Uh, Luann, thank you so much for being thank here you. with us today. Really enjoyed your sermon. Uh, we got a handful of questions. Sure. I'm just gonna dive in. Um, the first question is, um, you know, oftentimes we'll, when we see someone that we know, we'll ask, hey, how are you? Uh, and then the stock answer is good, doing fine. Um, but really, one of the challenges you gave us is we want to um, dig in more of that. We want to actually find out how people are doing, get authentic, real answers beyond just fine, how are you? Um, so how do we do that? How do we ask someone how they're doing, but in a way that actually gets them to respond in an authentic, honest way? Yeah, I think that's a good question because I think all of us are busy, right. crazy. You come here on Sunday, you're trying to get your kids checked in and get back and get into service. And, and so uh, we pass each other in the grocery store. We pass people, how are you? Fine, good, how are you? Good, right. and that's yeah. the end of it. And that's just sure. what we do. Um, so I think the first part is that we have to be intentional with our time. Yeah. And so when we are um, seeking to engage people, it looks like having more meals together. It looks like having coffee together. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like setting aside time for the people in our lives that um, that we care about, that we want to know more about. Um, you know, I think that um, besides just the regular, how are you doing? Um, one of Ken's popular questions is, how's the state of your soul mm -hmm. getting beyond? Um, I know people who know me well know that I struggle with migraines and, mm -hmm. and different things. And so people will often ask me, how are you doing with that? Right. So maybe asking rather than just how are you, but how are you doing with that thing that I know is happening right now? Right. A lot of times uh, if I see something on Facebook that someone's mentioned, like, someone passing away or uh, something they're going through. I try to make a mental note that like next time I see them or to text them and just be like, hey, right. are you doing okay with this? Can yeah. I help? Can I pray? What can I do? Um, but being intentional about those relationships. Absolutely. So it's, you got to make time for them mm -hmm. first uh, and then be specific with what you're mm -hmm. asking them and then um, and ask them in a different kind of way. And um, then make sure you have time to listen. Right. Um, because asking the question doesn't show, just asking the question doesn't show that you care if you're not making time to listen and process yeah. and be there for people. So making time for that. Right, absolutely. Uh, and specifically with this Resolve for More challenge, we want to hold each other accountable as mm -hmm. we are resolving to pray more, to read more, and um, to steward um, our, our money well. Um, and so how do you ask those questions of people? Mm -hmm. um, how do you hold each other accountable, but in a way that is, that's loving uh, and it doesn't seem like you're being judgmental or, or self-righteous yeah. or anything like, like that? Like, um, are you giving, let me see your right, checking yeah, account. Exactly. Um, no, I, well, first of all, there has to be a, a relationship yeah. in place. Um, and what community does is it fosters those relationships right. where we get to hear people's stories and we get to understand where they came from um, and what they're going through and what it looks like, you know, my walk with the Lord and what it looks like for me to read the Bible and pray and give might look very different for whatever season of life that you're in. Um, and so understanding that and being able to ask specific questions around that. Um, I think one of my favorite things to do is to always ask how they've seen God through that. Mm -hmm. Like what has God been teaching you in reading the Bible mm -hmm. rather than trying to just focus on, did you read the Bible today? Right. Um, because it can become a box that we check. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things of, okay, check, I read my Bible today. Check, I prayed today. Check, I think our right. finances are in order. Um, but what we really, we don't want to be just checking the box. Right. We want to be seeking God through that. And Absolutely. so asking people, what has God told you or what are you praying for and how have you heard him? Um, or even asking for um, stories about how you've seen God grow you by giving yeah. or what has he done through your generosity um, yeah. that you can share and celebrate with other people. Absolutely. Those are great questions. And like you said, having that community first is key. You're building that trust mm -hmm. so that people can feel comfortable and confident and, and sharing um, those very deep personal issues. 
Um, so thank you. That's, that's very helpful. And then another person wrote in and they talked about how life is just so busy, uh, especially, you know, you're working jobs, you have kids and a family and, and uh, oftentimes it can feel like you have no spare time, but you are challenging us to throw community into the mix, mm -hmm. uh, to get plugged into community. And for a lot of us, it can feel like, man, I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so what would you say to someone who says, I just don't have the time? Yeah, um, I would say that I totally get that. Mm -hmm. um, when my husband and I made a commitment to um, be faithful to going to small groups. So for a long time, we were in a small group at a church and we were marginal attenders. Yeah. Um, so we went when we weren't out of town or we weren't traveling or work wasn't too much. It was just kind of like a thing we did mm -hmm. if we weren't doing something else. Right. And we really felt in our walk, the Lord saying like, you need to commit to this and this needs to be a priority. And so yeah. we began having to shift things and rearrange things. We would have to, and we still do now, plan to be back from out of town by Sunday night so that Grow Group can be at our house. Um, there are activities that um, my kids have been involved in that we've had to say, I'm sorry, we, we cannot practice on Sunday nights from this time to this time. Like that is our time that we've set aside for this. Um, and I think at first that can feel, that can feel hard because yeah. it feels like just another thing. But once you do it and it becomes consistently part of your life, you'll wonder how you ever did it without these That's people. Right. Because I can't tell you how many times that my husband's been out of town, something happens, people are bringing meals, they're helping mm -hmm. me with the kids. Like I often think like I could not do this right. without them. And so it's not just something that you go to. It's That's a right. community that you become part of who's integral to helping all the other pieces of your life yeah. work well together too. Absolutely. And so, yeah, sometimes you'll, have to sacrifice other things yeah. possibly, or just get really creative uh, mm -hmm. with planning your schedule. But it's, like you said in your sermon, it's, it's so crucial. Just like mm -hmm. your time with the Lord, Absolutely. it's just as important Absolutely. to put both of them together to really grow right. and experience what God has for us. Exactly, it's incredibly difficult to grow your relationship with Christ without community. Mm -hmm. They go together. Uh, and so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so for someone who maybe they missed today, they weren't able to actually physically be here, uh, especially for the grow group meet and greet that we had after, but they're interested in joining a grow group, uh, what would be the next steps for that yeah. person? So here's what I love about uh, the way we do community here at Faithbridge is if you fill out a connect card mm -hmm. um, on a Sunday, or if you go online and make a request, um, you don't get just a automatic generated right. email, you actually get a person who reaches out to you through email, by phone, however you prefer to be contacted. And so they're not looking to just get you into a group. They're going to ask you questions like, tell me about your schedule. What yeah. day of the week works best for you? Where do you live? Right. What, how can we get you into something that's close to where you live? Maybe your neighbors are already in a right. group in your yeah. name. There's a group in your neighborhood, right. get connected there. Um, so we really seek to not just connect to someone on a Monday night, but to, to truly find a group for you where you can grow in your neighborhood with your people. Um, and so I would say go online or put on the connect card, but know that we're, we're gonna reach out to you and, and we wanna help you on this journey of getting connected into community. That's right, we're not just sending them to yeah. a Bible study. We're not just sending you to a Bible study. Right. We're sending to a group of people right. for you to grow with. And so um, I love the way that we get to talk to people and hear from you. Okay, let's, let's find something that, that works. Yeah, absolutely. So go online, fill out a connect card, or you can fill out a connect card on Sunday morning and turn it in and we'll get you plugged in. Uh, to a grow group. Well, Luann, thank you so much thank you, Adam. for being here today. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.